Okay, so now we've got all of the art materials that we need, we are going to get going with pre-painting preparations. I've said it again. So I've got all of the things behind me that I need to prep my canvas and I'll show you all of them right now. So I've actually got a canvas board, which is 24 by 24 inches. So you can't really see that on camera, but that's a canvas board. Usually I would paint with a canvas. This is just a mini one that I got. Usually I get Winsor & Newton oil ones, but I like ones that have got, that are a proper canvas and have got edges to them, but I'm just going to show you the scale. This is the largest canvas that I've got at the moment, so I'm going to show you on a canvas board, but either will work. I have got my palette, disposable palette with a clean slate ready to go. I have a little pot, which you can see is an old M&S flapjack pot, any pot will do, with just a tiny bit of water at the bottom. I have got a palette knife, but you could use anything for this, like you could just use a wooden stick or like that disposable cutlery that you get. Um, and then I've got three different, I have three different colours of acrylic paint plus white. So I've got ultramarine blue or primary blue, either will work, cadmium yellow hue and cadmium red hue, and you can just use any acrylic paint, but these are the primary colours and you can basically mix most colours that you'll need for the base from these, so you don't need to go out and purchase a whole host of different paints. Um, and then I've just got a big one of studio acrylic paint, um, which I use, and I've just made sure to cover my table so that it doesn't get dirty. Um, and I always use plastic, so it will come. your canvas will come in a plastic wrapping, and I try and keep that as intact as possible because I just use that to lay out underneath it. Do not use newspaper to protect your table because when you paint it will like stick to the newspaper if there's any drips or anything and then it's really hard to get off and it just looks really messy so use the plastic wrapping or anything else like plastic packaging that you've got or cardboard works as well so i am going to go put on a shirt quickly because i'm not wearing a white shirt to do this that is mistake number one Okay, so now we are going to prep our canvases and do not skip over this part because it was arguably one of the things that when I learned it, it made it so much easier and so much less intimidating to start sketching. So firstly, the reasons you want to prep your canvas is you don't want to be starting onto a bright white piece of canvas. Um, one, because it makes it, I find that it makes it harder to start and two, because white is the brightest colour. So when you are painting onto white, like whichever reference image that you're trying to paint, when you're painting onto white, it's quite hard for your brain to assess the colour because it's you're comparing against the brightest colour, white. Whereas when you've painted a mid-tone across your whole canvas, it's easier for your brain to assess what's lighter and darker than that mid-tone, tone, even if it's a different colour. So that's why it's super important. Okay, and choosing the colour is important and it can add a lot of richness or harmony to your piece. So you either want to choose a colour that is complementary to your piece. So for instance, the honeydew piece that I did, um, the background of that was like this really gorgeous like mint green and a lot of the colours in honeydew were like dark greens, turquoises, that kind of thing. So that was one where it really worked in harmony with the piece. Whereas other people, depends on the depends on the piece and the effect that you're going for. My other piece, which I did a while ago, which is called Amber Gaze, a lot of that was like navy blues with a few pops of orange. So I chose to do a really bright orange as the canvas base tone because I knew that like little bits of that would pop through and it would look really nice. Some people take this like to the extreme and not even use something that's in the piece. So you could be painting something that's like blue and you put like a mustard yellow in the background because you kind of want to see that effect of that mustard popping through. So it's up to you what kind of colour you want to go for, just make sure that you apply it as a base to the whole piece. If it's on a canvas board then obviously you don't have to think too much about the sides because it's really thin, but if you're doing this on a canvas it's kind of up for debate whether you should paint in the sides of the canvas. Um, I'll show you. So some artists like to paint in the edges of the canvas. Um, and some people like to leave those blank because you're probably going to frame it anyway. Personally, I like to paint in the edges um, just because I think it's a, a cleaner effect, um, but it's up to you. I think it's just nice like if when you get it framed that you know that none of that white is sticking through. I just 
have an aversion to white. Okay, so I've decided that I want to do it a kind of purpley colour, so I've squeezed out and I'll talk more about colour theory when we're actually into that section later, but I'll do a purpley colour so I'm just going to mix red and blue together with some white. And so what you can do to do this so that you get the exact colour that you want is just take a little bit of the paint and put that in one section, another little bit of the paint here, put that here, and then I want a lot of white so I'm just going to scrape that over. And you can do this in a tidier way, but you basically just end up working the colours in together until you've got something that you're happy with. And the reason for using a palette knife for this is that when I use a big brush, it sucks up a lot of the paint just in the mixing process, and I feel like you end up wasting more paint. But you can see that's a nice mauvey colour. I, for the size of the canvas that I've got, I need quite a bit more paint than that, so I'm just going to mix up a little bit more. Um, and I will put this on fast forward so you don't have to watch the whole thing. Um, that is the colour that I was looking for. So now I'm going to go grab my big brush and start applying it to my canvas. This is a fresh brush, so I'm excited to use this. And basically what I do, I just move these out of the way. What I do is just dip this so that you've got a little bit of water on it in your water pot or whatever you're using. I like to reuse and recycle. And then just get a nice amount of the paint on your brush so it's evenly applied and then I will twist it round so you can I will take the camera so you can see what I'm doing and then if I show you here just on my canvas I just literally take this paintbrush that is all loaded up with paint and this is the most exciting thing when you do that first stroke of paint um, and I like to do it in like these big wide sweeps on the canvas just because that's kind of my style and I like the effect that it has um, but also other artists go kind of up and down you can also use a roller for this um, but I just like I kind of like seeing the brush stroke marks I feel like a painting should have brush stroke marks so I personally like that and then I can tell that this is ever so slightly too thick you can see because it gets it shows through the grain. So if your paint is just slightly too thick, the way that acrylic mixes really well with water, because it's a water-based paint. So just apply it liberally. You don't have to be too precious in this step. Um, because in my art style anyway, the canvas is basically covered up. This is just to give you that background Now that you've got like an even texture all across, I like to just dip my paint in the water and then just make sure I've got some really beautiful brush marks all across. And really, you don't have to do this, but it just makes me happy when I'm doing my sketch and everything is in a really nice and even texture. Okay, so now your canvas is all prepped and you are ready to go. It shouldn't take too long to dry. You can always speed this process up with um, a hairdryer if you wanna get sketching really quickly, or you can just leave it to dry for like an hour or so and just make sure that it's dry before you start sketching. And also do not forget to wash your brushes now. Acrylic paint dries really quickly and you don't wanna ruin your brush.